the Aloha Friday and welcome to a brand new episode of Perspectives on Global Justice, Think Tech Hawaii. This is your host, Beatrice Cantelmo. Today, we will be conversing with the guest Holger Hain about how digital technology is being used for social good changes in our community and across the globe. Let's learn about a very special app that Holger is developing with other partners to assist Alzheimer's patients, their caregivers, and family members. And we will also learn about a different app development that he is also involved with that will increase healthcare providers' ability to identify the best cost-efficient medication options for follow-up treatments for patients on limited income. Well, thank you so much for being with us here today. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me. Yes, and so for our viewers, uh, would you mind giving a little blurb about you? Like, where do you come from? Or what is your education and professional background? All right. Well, um, I'm European. I was born and raised in Germany. Mm -hmm. And as a young man, I had the opportunity to come to the United States, uh, California, <laughs> San Francisco, of all places. And uh, oh. I never left for... 30 years, so. Oh, uh, so I lived most of my adult life in San Francisco Bay Area. Right. Um, and then three years ago, we moved to Hawaii. So, so you're here. brand new in Hawaii. Pretty much, and, yeah. uh, and so now you're doing work. So that you are a doctor. Do you mind telling our viewers what kind of doctor you are and what kind of work you've been developing in the mm -hmm. uh, uh, digital technology uh, right. field? <laughs> Uh, my PhD is in philosophy, mm -hmm. so I'm a philosopher. Uh, I received a PhD from the University of Melbourne in Australia. And they gave me a full scholarship to do my PhD. Lucky you. Well, I had to work for it. It uh, was in, uh, in recognition of a book that I translated into English. Oh. Uh, it was a book that was destroyed by the Nazis. There were only like 12 copies in existence. Well, still are really of the original. Mm -hmm. And I was able to find a copy at UC Berkeley Library. And uh, <clears throat> with encouragement from other faculty, I went ahead and translated that. And that, in turn, prompted the Australian Research Council and the University of Melbourne mm -hmm. to give me the scholarship. Um, <clears throat> in philosophy, I'm a, a historian of philosophy. I'm interested in the history of ideas mm -hmm. and how we come to think the way we do today and right. how it come that people thought different things you know, 200 years ago. And in that broad field, uh, my expertise is actually history of logic, mathematics. So like a perfect foundation mm -hmm. for the cutting edge digital technology work that's yes. been developed now. Right. So how did you get involved with digital technology? Well, um, my partner Suzanne and I, we started a website design company some 20 years ago in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. In fact, we started one year before there was Google. So No way. So you were already... Prehistoric times Pro. in terms of the internet, you know, or, or I'm really old in terms of internet. What whichever was way. it like to actually launch a website a year before Google? Yeah, it was interesting. And I mean, San Francisco is very tech Tech positive kind tech, of community. Yeah. But I remember talking to people, uh, trying to convince them to get email accounts. Right? And I was, no, nah, we have fax. You know. <laughs> Who needs email? Right? I have a fax. You know, I'm all good. You know, don't bother Imagine me with this new tangle that. stuff. Who needs emails when you have fax? Yeah. I remember I had, I had fax like mm -hmm. near my house and yeah. I would send faxes to a few friends. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was the thing, yes. you know, back in the day. I remember we had these <laughs> printer scanner things that you could send a fax to it. It was like, yay. Right, and it cost it a fortune, you know, depending on where did. you sent yeah. it, you know. Wow, so here so we are. So that's, uh, that's where we started. And uh, Suzanne and I were coming a little bit out of the event industry, so that led us into mm -hmm. this business. Uh, but early on already, we started doing, uh, we were interested in work uh, for community-oriented uh, mm -hmm. purposes. So. We build websites for the Columbia Foundation. It's a huge grant maker in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. It's connected to Levi Strauss and the Haas family. So I did their website. That was an early project. And, you know, 20 years in the business, we were able to move towards projects that we find personally also rewarding and where right. we know uh, they do some good in the world or mm -hmm. make things a little better for somebody. 
And that's very important. So many years as a business owner, we would you know, try to increase commerce turnover, mm -hmm. you know, help people sell this or that. But fortunately, over time, we were able to transition you know, to projects that are more rewarding on a personal level and also are more meaningful for, for others. Right, and that's, that's such a privilege to be able to shift from that model of mm -hmm. uh, creating a product for profit yeah. where you still can make mm -hmm. a living, but yeah. that there is this need and there is also a window where you mm -hmm. can link people and to create good, social good. So mm -hmm. the part of the title of our uh, show today is mm -hmm. Digital um, uh, Technology for Social Good right. and Changes. Yes. So let's talk about that. You know, okay. uh, you're working with, uh, I'm imagining, a few projects. Yes, yes. <laughs> Too many sometimes. <laughs> right? but so which one would you like to share? Well, there, there, there are two major projects that uh, are right. at the center of uh, what we're doing at the moment. So one is an app uh, that uh, is designed to help people with memory problems. Mm -hmm. And particularly who we have in mind are people with early stage or mild stage uh, Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. So they're functioning, but they already have uh, substantial memory problems. And memory right. And there we're working with a uh, professor of geriatric medicine here at U of H, uh, Dr. Warren Wong. Right. And he was one, on one of your shows uh, here mm -hmm. at the station. And uh, it's, uh, it's a very rewarding but also very difficult problem uh, project to work on because of the nature of the target group. Mm -hmm. you, know, it's, you can't assume that people will know which button to click or what certain things mean. And uh, so we had to work very carefully on the user interface design uh, because, I mean, we wanted to be enjoyable mm -hmm. to the patient or the person with memory problems as well. Right. So, um, I know that there are a few apps mm -hmm. in the market already right. uh, that's targeted, you know, to this uh, yeah. community. So, what is the difference, the promise that mm. you are bringing with this new app development? What yeah. distinguishes, or what is the vision mm -hmm. uh, of what you are developing now with what is already currently in the market? Right. Well, one thing that sets us apart. I mean, there there are many. Great products, uh, mostly focusing on uh, improving brain health or like the puzzles mm -hmm. and, and certain right. games, right? But they tend to be generic. So what we're doing is we're developing something like an electronic photo album using pictures out of the person's life and incorporating them in a game-like environment mm -hmm. uh, to reinforce memories. So, so very customized and they yes, will yes. actually mm -hmm. probably most likely react to it, have an immediate recognition yeah, yeah, because it yeah, comes from yeah. their life. It, it was one of the most rewarding experiences in developing Great. an app uh, when we go test and, uh, you know, there are these moments of delight okay, and uh -huh. surprise uh -huh. uh, because most folks, many of them a, we're battling this thing of just using technology, but once we get them there, to see pictures of their loved ones, usually it's pets or grandchildren, okay, so there's little niece, Emmy, and she appears in one of the pictures, oh, there's my niece or my grandchild, you know, and, and yeah. people lighten up, you can see it, you know, the face, the smile comes up, and then they click away and see what's next. And, and that is so great to see, you know, this moment of joy, really, right. yeah. and, and a very difficult situation because uh, those folks know that their memory is going, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's not an anonymous process, you're aware of it, and there's a lot of frustration, yeah. so... And a lot of shame, mm -hmm. and also yeah. frustration, yeah. and I actually can relate quite well to what you say, my Hanai mm -hmm. father, which became my Hanai father here in Hawaii. Right. Okay. <laughs> One of my first jobs in Hawaii, actually, was to do functional assessment evaluations oh, right. on individuals who um, had vascular dementia or oh, right. um, uh, Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. and so I need to figure out what, where were their baseline in terms of memory loss and also make recommendations yeah. on whether they 
uh, would need more support, assistive technology, yeah. more support right. with people in their homes, mm -hmm. or if they needed to be transitioned into a nursing facility yeah. or memory loss, no. you no. know, uh, a department. Right. And uh, so one of the many clients I evaluated, I don't know what it was, but uh, we, when I started to interview him, it was like flat. There was nothing there, mm. and I wasn't sure how far gone he was. Right. But I did look at his library, and oh, uh, there okay. were several books on anthropology. I had no idea who the man was. <laughs> and there were dictionaries in Portuguese, Italian, oh, okay. Spanish, and Portuguese. So I started asking him questions in Portuguese, in Italian, mm. and in Spanish. And mm. it was like a dislike bulb oh, in right, his mind, right, 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 right. because he recollected a lot of things from mm -hmm. his own childhood. He lived in Brazil for a couple of years, right. and he also lived in Italy as an mm -hmm. older, you know, uh, yeah. adult man with his first wife. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he also did a lot of work uh, in South America as an anthropologist before right, right. he started to focus more mm -hmm. on Pacific. Uh, region and studies right. so uh, you know it was it was really hard because with the things we had available we couldn't engage him but we had to customize it yeah, he yeah. wrote books and oh. so I would pick uh, you know passages of the books mm -hmm. and read and say hey tell me about this person right, who this right. person was or who you know, mm -hmm. what, what this time uh, in, in, in life was like, you know, mm -hmm. in Tahiti mm -hmm. or in Hawaii. Right, yeah. And all of a sudden, you mm -hmm. know, he was, he used to be a professor of anthropology at UH right. Manoa. Mm -hmm. And all of Educated a sudden, world, yeah. he was giving lectures again. Oh, right. And uh, well, about, is, about for the entire week, he was just pretty much looking in the mm -hmm. air. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and one of the things his wife would tell me was that, um, those small moments where he could recognize pictures mm -hmm. and names and places and right. memories. They were quite accurate, actually. I actually mm. started testing him oh, and okay. see like, yeah. how much he remembered what he wrote. Yeah, you know, yeah. It would have been like 90% accurate, you know, because oh. he, re he really did the mm. work. I said, well, I know he did not fake your books. You yeah. really, really <laughs> right, worked on right. your books. Yeah, yeah. But the feel good, he, he had this, you know, rush mm -hmm. of endorphins in, mm -hmm. and the dopamine mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. neurotransmitters. And so for a couple of days, mm -hmm. his effect was happier, mm -hmm. as yeah. opposed to the gloomy, sad, depressed, yeah. you know, yeah. frustrated right. views that he, he used yeah. to have. Yeah. And so I'm really excited to see your uh, oh, app coming. So you. it's supposed to help um, uh, the patient. Yes. And uh, so, so you have a way for them to customize picture album right, and, right. and all the things from their past. Yeah. But what about for the caregiver and uh, the um, relatives? relatives how, how would that app, mm -hmm. uh, how can they connect with that right. app to, and with their loved one through yes, the app? Yes, uh, so uh, exactly uh, issues we've been facing. So in developing this, we realized there's really three roles that uh, take part of it. One is the administrator. That's, we think of the person who configures the app, uploads mm -hmm. the pictures, provides the information. Right. And uh, so that's a very important role. Often we find uh, it's very attractive for folks who have uh, uh, separate by distance. So they live on the East Coast, but their parent or somebody is in a home here. But we also try to bring a connection uh, into play. So we call it the Memory and Connection app. Actually. And uh, so what we do is that folks can send little messages when they upload a new picture. Hey, here's a picture of Uncle John I uploaded. Uh, do you remember him, or do you like him, or what do you remember about him? Right. You know, sometimes funny what comes back, because like I said, people remember bits yeah. often of a more distant past, uh, yes. you know, when they were younger. But then the memory is crystal clear, it's amazing. Uh, so we're trying to support the connection part. Right. Um, and the other role is the caregiver. That's often uh, professional caregivers who mm -hmm. spend so much time every day with the person. They have no idea about what that person's life in the past was. Yeah, exactly. Right. So there's yeah. one, uh, we dealt with different, so it allows a glimpse into the person's life. Uh, so 
But, and we found it works really well as a, a conversation tool, so to speak. So there's a game uh, sequence, but you can stop any time and talk about the picture mm -hmm. or what happened right. and things like that. So we found that that is a very positive effect of the app, and it works really nicely in this kind of setting where mm -hmm. two people play through the app and talk about it, whatever comes up. And again, it's often about uh, not so much about being right about the facts. Okay, they're, they're very yeah. different uh, therapeutic approaches. Mm -hmm. We are going with what's called emotional validation. So we don't confirm wrong answers, but we also don't penalize for it. Right. Uh, we just want to continue the process, the game, and Engagement. we direct people, as long as they tap away on things, we guide them to the right answer. That's good. Right. We need to take one minute break. Okay. And then the Sure. We'll jump right into this conversation again. <laughs> Sounds great. All right. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go beyond the lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. Aloha and mabuhai. My name is Emmy Ortega Anderson, inviting you to join us every Tuesday here on Pinoy Power Hawaii with Think Tech Hawaii. We come to your home at 12 noon every Tuesday. We invite you to uh, listen, watch uh, for our mission of empowerment. We aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and we hope to empower. Again, maraming salamat po, mabuhay, and aloha. Aloha Friday. Welcome back to Perspectives on Global Justice Think Tech Hawaii. This is your host, Beatrice Cantamo, and we are here with Holger Hein. So, uh, Holger, we were talking about um, emotional validation in the context of this beautiful app that, you mm -hmm. know, that it's been developed to support yeah. Alzheimer's patients and their caregivers and family members. Right. So, please continue. Well, <laughs> Emotional validation is important, and uh, <clears throat> there I'm relying on, on Warren, Dr. Wong's uh, expertise, and he encouraged us to develop prototypes to test uh, uh, how we can assist there. And uh, there is a great deal of frustration usually in people with memory problems. Okay? I mean, we know it ourselves. I mean, sometimes things are on the tip of our tongue, and, and we get angry with ourselves. How come I can't think of that name? Or, right, you know, yeah. Um, I have that, and I'm like, oh my God, am yeah. I having Alzheimer's? Well, don't worry. I, I think that's part of normal, you know, functioning that we don't recall everything all the time. Probably a good thing. <laughs> but, uh, right. Anyway, it, 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 it becomes a cause of frustration, right? And uh, uh, we wanted to at least uh, relay the message and the feeling, look, it's important what you feel, and we do care. So uh, we're incorporating things that involve a little bit of AI. We're developing something of a chatbot that begins to know the person as they speak with them. You know? but, oh. And we call the chatbot Suzanne, you know, just to give a name, make it personal. We have some pictures. And Suzanne now asks simple things like, uh, what did you have for breakfast or what did you eat today? Or, what do you prefer for lunch or dinner? What's your favorite meal? How's the weather? What do you do on a rainy day? But also we ask things, what do you do when you're sad? So this is something other apps shy away from, but mm -hmm. uh, we feel it's part of the reality of dealing with this mm -hmm. uh, you know, decline. And oh, uh, we found an, an, that it's actually a good thing for people to be able to say, no, I feel horrible today. I mean, it's, it's not yeah. what you want, but you want to acknowledge this, the emotional state that Absolutely. they're in, right? And say, yeah, you know. And plus, like, well, if you are having a bad day, mm -hmm. whether you're feeling bad and, right. you know, upset, frustrated, and you have somebody trying to cheer you up when you already gave the cue that you're not feeling, well, it's not going to go too good, right? right? right because, yeah. I mean, feelings are fluid and they won't yeah. last for forever. Right. But I imagine that this mm -hmm. is not only 
good for the person who mm. is feeling what they're feeling. We should be entitled to continue to yeah. own our own feelings, mm. whatever mm. they are, right. any age and any mental state we're yeah. at, yeah. but also for those around us to be a little bit more cognizant of it. Yeah. Neither, yeah. you know, make right. some small right. adjustments or big ones, yeah. you know. Well, it, yeah. is a, it is a fact that, you know, relatives and loved ones learn how to deal with a person mm. who has this uh, yeah. terrible disease. Uh, right? You'd be surprised, though. Some yeah. people really, uh, especially I've seen that in caregiving settings mm -hmm. where there's always the cheerful people. Oh, right. Which yeah. is very positive, but there is a time, and sometimes that mm. part of, you mm. know, just giving a little time right. for that person to process that yeah. feeling and maybe redirecting with something less forceful might right. be more right. helpful yeah. Yeah. because then people go from being sad to combative or angry yeah. i know for myself i don't mm. care whether my brain will work the way it is if i have alzheimer's someday but i think that's like the old part of limbic system mm. where mm. if you are you know triggered in the wrong way yeah. You know, you're going to react a, a certain way, you know, it's a, but it's part of dignity, yeah, yeah. I think, right. you know, to be able to, you know, still uh, have that space, be allowed, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, because you have so little control at that yeah. point in your life. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, our approach is <clears throat> we're aiming to improve the quality of life, uh, yeah. maybe create a little bit of joy, happiness yeah. while playing with this thing, mm -hmm. remembering stuff. So uh, we're not there to correct their memory. You know, exactly. or anything like that, or deny what they're feeling. Uh, folks are not asked enough in a sincere way how they're really feeling. You know? So yeah. uh, we have this little mechanism and we're going to build this out a little bit more so we can also relay data to professional caregivers. So if mm -hmm. somebody is in a terrible mood for a whole week, maybe it's worth you know, a conversation. Yeah. Whereas if you see normal variants, you know, today I'm happy, tomorrow I'm so-so, you know, whatever. That's a more you know, to be expected, different right. moods, then that we would consider normal. But it, it allows us to flag certain, you know, ongoing issues. I, mean, I have an invitation. You guys should develop <laughs> an extended app for family members and co You know, it's, you know? <laughs> it's one thing we realized is uh, there is a... There's a vast amount of apps, say, for uh, people with attention problems, you know, young people, um, I can't think of the name right now, but they tend to be very rigid in their social behavior, uh, Asperger's like syndrome, Asperger's syndrome and, yeah. and related stuff. So th there's a whole bunch of research and, and therapies. Uh, for people with Alzheimer's and uh, this mid-level to early memory loss, there's very little. So right. we're, we're trying to address that. And uh, that includes the, the surrounding environment of the person, so family, loved ones, caregivers, professional. Mm -hmm. But we also, we are a startup, so we are focusing on what's called an MVP, you know, just get the main important things into the app and get them to work properly. Right. You know, and then you can always add. So where are you at in this app development? So I've oh. seen you have a, a prototype, yes, or, and you've mm -hmm. been doing a pilot with a yep. group. Mm -hmm. Like how many people have you guys oh, checked this uh, with and for so how long? The app is in the App Store, both for iPhone and iPads. Outstanding. And we have about 150 installs at this point. Okay. Uh, we market and we, we decided to focus on Hawaii. Uh, because it's a beautiful sort of contained community uh, that we find manageable rather than trying to go nationwide Global. right now. And, Any uh, plans to go nationwide? Yes, the app will grow. Yes, okay. and it's international, so we have people downloading it in England. Uh, it's only as an English-speaking version right okay. now. So that's one of the things we're looking at: uh, getting Chinese, uh, Japanese, mm -hmm. other languages, other yeah. languages in there. Uh, but so we're focusing on Hawaii and Oahu because it also allows us to meet with folks. Uh, it's not your typical app development in the sense mm -hmm. that we're really de dealing with a serious medical situation. And, uh, and progressive. We, we're grateful. You know, we need the consent of the family and the institution, wherever they are, so before we can go in and try the app with them and observe them. Right. So, uh, but that's very important for us uh, that we have you know, what's called monitor testing, where you sit down with the folks and watch what they do with your app. So, and so the app is in the App Store. We will release a new version very soon, which has some new features. So, can you tell the name of the app for our viewers who might be interested yes, in downloading? Yes, of course. <laughs> right. 
The name is Memor C, that's M E M O R C, like vitamin C, but Memor C. Memor C, okay. And you can find it in Apple's App Store for iPhone and iPad. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, this is a really exciting project. Mm -hmm. And how long have you been working on this app development oh, collaboratively yeah. with Dr. Dr. Wang, right? Yes, Dr. Yeah. Warren Wang. Um, I th it's about two years now, or maybe a little yeah. longer. I mean, it started as a discussion, and uh, I, I called Dr. Warren Warren because <laughs> we're working together. Uh, he had this vision, he had this idea, and he thought, ah, oh, you know, this might work. But if he, he's not a coder, he's, he's a doctor. He cares for his patients, right. he's done it all his life. And so through the Impact Hub, which is also a familiar term for many yes, viewers. Yes, this lovely magical co-working right, space where that's... people just spark ideas and partnerships. Exactly, and... and that's how we connected through another party. And we talked, and yeah. I said, oh, look, you know, maybe we can build a little demo or just some screens. And that's how that started. And, uh, oh, beautiful. Just to bring it to life so you can... It's always a different thing, having an app idea in your mind. I mean, I'm an app developer. Everybody tells me, oh, I have this killer idea. You know, can we build this? Yeah. But most ideas are not that well thought out or Perfect. they're not familiar with the competing products. Mm -hmm. So best I mean, is, They may not translate into what is possible yeah, in yeah. the computer, computer realm in the right, world. Right, yeah. Yeah. So um, you're working on a different uh, app also yes. uh, to support healthcare providers and patients. That's right. Yes. Is that app uh, developed or uh, no, already in That's in a much earlier stage. Uh, so there okay. we are um, exploring uh, briefly the, the concept for the app is uh, to help especially underserved patients at hospitals, basically folks who show up at emergency rooms, get treatment, mm -hmm. uh, often uh, not able to afford prescription medicines. We, we are developing a, an app or a kiosk that would allow them to find the lowest possible cost for their prescriptions uh, using various resources. So often there, there's funding available or there's support available, mm -hmm. but unfortunately uh, the, the group that it's aimed for, I mean, these folks who come to the I emergency rooms repeatedly, often maybe. they're just not really able to fill out the forms or know where to look. They just see, oh, this thing costs $500 no or, way, or 200 yeah, and yeah. No way, right? I mean, the, so we're developing a system that applies all the available benefits. And we had some examples where medications that was $2,000 came down to seventeen. I right. imagine that. Uh, you know, so it's this crazy thing about The pharmaceutical about company American, must not love you at uh, the moment. <laughs> well, I'm not... I just want to help people, okay? And, right. and these things are yeah. all in place. It's more about helping find what's already there. Yeah. It's, it's almost like finding grants for this purpose or something. Exactly. We are fortunate enough to live in a very wealthy country. I um, agree. And there's resources nobody else has. But there are also many obstacles to accessing these resources right. or the funds. So that's more my role. And hence, I'm, digital technology for social good. This right. is one Basically example, right. you know, that... You got it, yeah. That is beautiful. I can't so, believe we are out of time. Already? Wow. Already. How did that happen? However, I want to invite you again in the near future to continue oh, to talk a little bit more about this wonderful app mm -hmm. that you're developing yeah. uh, for patients and caregivers, uh, right. and healthcare professionals. Because yeah. uh, I think we need to hear more of that and mm -hmm. all the projects that might be in the back burner. Yes. Um, and, uh, yes. and yes, I mean, I'm very grateful that you're here with us today. Great. And, you. Uh, you know, thank you for the beautiful heart and mind that you have. And oh, uh, for kind. making that connection between you're mind and kind. heart and say, let's uh, make this, you know, and manifest sure. into something beautiful out there in the universe right. that people need and benefit. So. Yeah. Kudos to you. Oh, thank you. Much love and gratitude. Uh, thank you. So one last thing is memoriesconnect.com is the website where memories you can connect. learn more about this so Memoriesconnect.com. Mm -hmm. right. Well, that's all, folks. And uh, thank you so much for watching us. And uh, I'll see you uh, in two weeks. Uh, we hope.